So I'm going to talk about some biology which is exciting on the engineering perspective. Um, you see our study animal here, which is a moth, here's another example. And what we found about a year ago is that these um, central furry bits on the body are sound absorbers. And they use these sound absorbers um, to hide themselves from detection by bat biosonar. So these are nice juicy insects, bat go crazy if they can get them. Um, so sound absorbers on the body are more traditional sound absorbers, um, like porous absorbers that we are used to see in our offices and homes in some cases. Um, but the tricky bit is um, uh, uh, a protection, like a stealth protection cloak uh, only is as good as its weakest part. And you can easily see how this thick fur that you have on the body, you couldn't deploy on your wings. But if your wing gives away your presence, reflections of your wings, um, that, that defeats the whole purpose. So we were intrigued by uh, whether and if how the wings, which are much thinner in their scaly structure on top, might achieve the same acoustic benefit than the furry part of the body um, gives them to provide an all round stealth coating. So we looked at the structures that we have there, and you can see that these wings have individual scales that overlap and give a rather complex uh, 3D matrix of structures. First thing we did is we sort of uh, isolated some of these wing samples and characterized them acoustically. Um, and what we did here without going into too much detail is we plotted something called the relative absorption coefficient, which tells us how much um, of the sound is uh, affected by the presence or absence of the scale. So anything above the dashed line here means um, the scales absorb sound, anything below means the scales reflect more sound. Orange here or brown here is moth, blue here is butterflies. So scales in butterflies reflect more sound, scales in moth absorb sound. And they absorb sound up to about 75% of the energy. And they do this, and that's the important bit, at a very good actually impressively good wing thickness to wavelength ratio. Why is that important? Because from an engineering perspective, you want to make your sound absorber thinner if you possibly can. Usual sound absorbers operate at a one over 10 ratio between uh, wavelength and thickness. These biological sound absorbers go down to one over 100, which is a factor of 10 in performance increase. So we found empirically that these moth scale layers are deep sub wavelength broadband sound absorbers, which exceed technical solutions. We published that in PNES in December. Um, um, so we can state we've got fur as porous absorber, which is traditional and thick, and scales that are deep sub wavelength and broadband. So what is the mechanism behind it? And we, we looked at this and identified that this actually is the first known natural acoustic metamaterial. So the individual scales uh, act as unit cells, individual resonators. Um, they are ultra thin because uh, the, the whole structure is ultra thin because it's based on resonant absorption rather than porous absorption. And it's broadband by being a tuned array. I don't know whether you see my video still. This is a 3D model of a, a moth wing. And if you shake it, you can see they all vibrate, each at their own frequency. And that creates the absorption. So we've got a mechanism. Um, it's also linked to the nanostructure and we try to replicate this because eventually we want to build nicer and better um, sound absorbers. We use some rapid prototyping uh, with direct right lithography or in physics. And our first samples seem to be indicating that there is a measurable effect, the suppression of the sound at the resonant frequency, um, which works at less than one hundredth of the wavelength and gets up an absorption coefficient at 0.9. Uh, and that's where I'll end. Thank you. Cool. Um, I mean, I've always been fascinated at how specific uh, animal responses are. I mean, I, I worked uh, briefly with somebody who, who worked on uh, hearing in, in moths and, and discovered that moths basically, uh, their whole hearing is about hearing bats. The only reason they have hearing, the only thing they use it for is for bats. And, and again, this is such an incredibly specific response. You have these two creatures all through history kind of uh, using evolution to, to invent things like, like you just discussed uh, to, to try and escape from each other or to, to eat each other. Uh, so these structures you see in the wings, are they, um, are they uh, specific to particular species or do you see them across uh, all bats? 
Oh, sorry, all, all maths. So I think you, you in the beginning of your uh, question, you sort of gave the answer around it very common. I didn't know that you were working on, on moth hearing, so I, I think we need to talk more. Well, no, I mean, I, I, I did briefly a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so the, so the, um, the answer is uh, the moth that we have discovered this in are deaf. So we believe they use this as an alternative defense. So if you've got active hearing, you can fly away. If you don't have active hearing, you rely on stealth coating. And we find that there is some um, gradual effect. So if you get bigger and deafer, um, you have got better protection. Um, so why do they make that trade-off? I mean, uh, do you have some evolutionary story about that, that trade-off? When did they decide you know, to be oh. deaf or, or to have so I, I don't think it's, Yeah, that's a good point. Well, this is what evolution does. Huh? So it, 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 it embarks on a route and then it sort of optimizes it. And I think these were just organisms that never invented an ear. So they found alternative means of protection, which in this case is the stealth cloaking. And I've got a question that you have in Q&A I can answer to everybody. Yeah, great. Yeah, go for it. Yes, these resonant frequencies are tuned to the bat sonar frequencies. They cover the full range of them. And we, we've done a quantitative analysis that, that actually these resonances are spread equally across all frequencies that bats are using in the moth, but not in the bat, uh, in the in the butterflies. Uh, 